Hi, this is Shannon from SIS, the number four, teachers.org. Thanks so much for joining us for our Math for Littles on word problems with story mats. We're going to be applying real math situations in a concrete pictorial abstract way known as CPA. This is great for early childhood, preschool, and kindergarten students to start to the beginning parts of word problems. In this series, we'll show a variety of math work maths that give situations for students to apply different types of math skills. In this tutorial video we're going to be showing you how to use the My Word Problem Story Mat at the playground. There's a picture of a swing set that we will be looking as if we're in a playground and acting out story problems. Students will be using counters, they can use beans or beads or even pennies to act out what's happening in a story that they're hearing auditorily. Down at the bottom of the box, each mat has a quick draw where the child will do a quick draw of their mathematical thinking. In this box, they don't need to have a lot of details like we might ask them to do in reading or writing. However, it's a quick draw to show their mathematical thinking. Could be tallies, circles, squares, something simple to show how they're quantifying what's happening in the story. For students that are ready, they can do a number bond or a number sentence to go along with it. Each of the math work mats has a list of story problems that are great to use with different ages of children. You always can add in different characters and you certainly can always change the quantity of the number that you're working with based on the age and the grade of the child you're working with. Problems 1, 2, and 3 on the sample story problems are all going to be part whole addition samples. So it's going to give you a part and a part and a total. They're going to act it out on the mat. Number 4 and 5 are really great problems that are just giving examples of how to work on subtraction. So you're given a total, part of that total disappears in some way, how many is left. Number six and seven on here are going to be really great problems to show with missing add-in. So it's going to give a total and a part, but the child has to figure out the other part. The last three problems, eight, nine, and ten, are designed to be higher order thinking questions. They might not just ask if there's one child in the swings and two more joins how many all together it might ask them th things like how many eyes do we see or how many legs do we see these are offered for students to go a little bit deeper with the concepts then when when some of the part part total parts become a little bit too easy we're going to act out a story problem on the mat using some counters the story problem that we're going to act out has to do with ants crawling on the swing set. So we're going to have six ants crawling up the swing set on the playground and maybe a couple might fall off. So let's start off with putting six ants onto the playground. So I'm going to put six ants maybe crawling up the pole of the swing set and maybe they're getting to the top so I have five and then I'll kind of have my sixth ant. Maybe I'm going to say that two of the ants scurry down onto the grass. So I'm going to show taking from my six, taking the two away. Now, how many ants are left on the swing set? With my concrete tool, I demonstrated showing the six and then taking the two away. We want students to do this in an open-ended way, not with prompting from an adult. Let them act out the scenario. Let them have productive struggle. It's okay if it's not perfect. Ask them how they're doing and what they're thinking as they're acting it out. Down here in our quick draw box, we can draw out what it was that we made. So I'm going to first draw out kind of just my six ants that I maybe started off with. So I'm going to have my one, two, three, four, five, six. My ants could be circles, they could be, um, you know, X's, however I want to make it is totally fine. I now have six total ants and we know that two of them went away. So I'm going to cross off two of my ants. I'm going to go ahead and put my X kind of on top so you can see it there. And then I'm going to cross off another ant showing that I'm crossing. Another one is leaving sort of the scene of where we're working with. And so I'm going to cross off this one and then cross off another one. 
Now, how many do I have left? I have four left. So now on this side, a child could do a number bond or they could write a number sentence based on what they saw. So in this case, we started off with six ants crawling up the swing set. We know that two of the ants went down back on the grass. How many ants do we have left? We know that on the swing set we have four ants left on the swing set. So we're going to go ahead and make our four here by pulling that together and there we can see our four there. The idea of this is that they're acting it out with concrete tools, pictorial models, and abstractly. When a child can auditorily hear a story problem and act it out appropriately with no help, show a picture in an abstract way, we know they really built a great foundation for understanding the beginning parts of story problems. We hope that you found our video helpful on how to bring math word problems into your classroom or at home using a story mat solving with concrete pictorial abstract. We hope that you'll join us on our website at sis4teachers.org for a lot of great videos and other resources. You also can reach us at any of our social medias from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, as well as LinkedIn with the handle at sis4teachers. Thanks so much for joining us.